All right, today we're going to take a tour of the San Diego Zoo. Okay. Now this is a really big park, so I'll try to get as much footage as I can of as many animals as possible. And as we walk through the park, I'll share some tips and tricks and things that are helpful if you're visiting the San Diego Zoo. There is a good amount of walking up and down trails. The good thing is, there's a lot of ways to get around to help minimize the amount of walking that you have to do. So one of the first things I'd recommend is taking the bus tour around the park. That'll give you a really good idea of the layout. And next I'd recommend trying out the Skyfari, which will take you on a one-way trip across the park and get a good scope and idea of how big the park is. It's really amazing. There's a large variety of animals and wildlife here and so many wonderful exhibits to explore. And let's see how much we can see and learn in one day. I love this statue that's right in front. I think it's really interesting how uh, it was built and how all of the sculpture balances on one point there. Here we are at the front entrance. How you doing? So we're here on a Sunday. It's about 10.30 a.m. And as you can see, it's getting pretty busy. The weather's looking pretty nice today. It's going to be a Santa Ana here in San Diego, so we should have some clear skies. It should be around 80 degrees today or so. And at the front of the park, you can pick up a copy of the map, or you can scan the QR code. Right in front of the park is the bus tour. And again, I'd recommend that if this is your first time, uh, you check out the bus tour as it travels around the park, and you'll get a really good idea of the layout of the park. And as you enter the park, you'll see a lot of really neat gift shops. There are also artists here who can draw caricatures. Here's the Komodo Kingdom. The Komodo dragon is endemic to the Indonesian islands and it's the largest species of lizard growing up to 10 feet in length at a weight of up to 150 pounds. And there's a little tortoise. Hey buddy. Here we are at the reptile house. And this is a shingleback skink. The Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake is the largest species of rattlesnake and it's one of the heaviest venomous snakes known on the planet. Snouted Cobra. Wow. The Green Anaconda is a non-venomous boa constrictor that can grow up to 17 feet in length. They're known to eat birds, lizards, fish or mammals up to half its size. And here is the largest venomous snake in the world, the King Cobra. The King Cobra is known for its recognizable neck flap. When threatened, they raise their head upright, puffing and hissing. This is the Philippine sail finned lizard. And this is the timber rattlesnake. These are found in eastern and central United States. You can see the rattler on his tail there. This is the Mang Mountain Pit Viper. They're venomous and endangered species. This is called a Boland's Python. And they're found in New Guinea. And here's the West African Green Mamba. It's a venomous snake from Western Africa. Here's one of the buses that does a tour around the park. This area is called the Terrace Lagoon. And here is McLovin, which is a Tasmanian devil way back there. And if you look right ahead, you'll see one of the koalas sleeping. These guys sleep most of the day. Part of the reason is it takes a long time for them to digest the leaves. The eucalyptus leaves apparently take a lot of effort to uh, digest and therefore they sleep most of the day. Here's another koala taking a nap. I love how they each have their own tree.
And this is one of the kangaroo buses that you could take. Again, these buses uh, arrive about every 15 minutes or so. So every time you see one of these kangaroo bus stops, uh, if you'd like to take a ride, uh, you can wait and they'll take you to different parts of the park. And here we have a beautiful greater one-horned rhinoceros. Um, these are an endangered species and they come from Nepal and India. And unfortunately, they're hunted and poached for their horns because it's believed to be uh, of medicinal use. But that's untrue because their horns are made from a material called keratin, which is essentially the same thing as your fingernails. Cheetahs are found in Africa and central Iran. They're the fastest land animal, running at speeds between 50 to 70 miles per hour. Adults are around 5 feet in length, weighing up to 160 pounds. And these are the southern crested porcupines uh, from southern Africa. They are the largest rodent in Africa, and uh, they're nocturnal animals. And this is a Bornean bintron from Borneo. Here we are at one of the flamingo exhibits. Uh, at this one we can get a really nice, good close-up look at these flamingos. And they typically live in uh, the southern hemisphere. That would be South America and Africa. Here we have the Maasai giraffe. They live in Tanzania and Kenya. And for a fee of $15, you can have a group of up to four people uh, feed the rhinos. So all the people over there waiting to feed this rhino, lucky rhino. Here we are at the Africa Rocks portion of the park at the Ethiopian Highlands. And this is home to the baboons. The Hamadryas baboon are native to North Africa and the Arabian Peninsula. A social unit consists of a single adult male, several females, and their offspring. Females do most of the parenting. They nurse and groom the infants, and one female in the unit may groom an infant that is not hers. Hamadryas baboons often appear in ancient Egyptian art. They were considered sacred to the Egyptian god Thoth, who was often depicted as a man with the head of a baboon. From here you can see all the various netting structures that they have to house all the different birds. It's really incredible. Hey there, buddy. Opened on July 1st of 2017, Africa Rocks highlights the biodiversity of Africa. Along this canyon trail, you'll see African penguins, lemurs, crocodiles, birds, leopards, and baboons. The gelada baboon is a species found only in the Ethiopian highlands they're known for the bright red patch of skin on their chest, which is shaped like an hourglass. The gelada's vocal repertoire is believed to be similar in complexity to that of humans. The leopard is distinguished by its well-camouflaged fur. Their hunting behaviors, broad diets, strength, and flexibility allow them to adapt to a wide range of environments. This is the woodland aviary. As you can see, it is a large netted area that's separated into different habitats for the different birds. And you can see kind of how extensive this netting is. It's to make sure that the animals are safe in their own spaces. Lemurs share resemblance with other primates, but they evolved independently in isolation on Madagascar and this divergence may have occurred up to 50 million years ago. And 
here we are at the iconic waterfall and this is a really cool place to uh, take a break because it's very scenic. It's a great place to take some pictures and you get the, the nice mist coming off of the water there. It's a good place to cool down. You can walk behind the waterfall and take some pictures there. And uh, at night it's lit up as well. Beautiful place. This is one of the newest additions to the park. So I'd highly recommend checking out this area for the beginning of your tour. Here we have the West African Dwarf Crocodile. Uh, these live in West Africa. They're about five feet long. Soaking in some sun. The African penguins are a species of penguin found only in southern Africa. A pursuit diver, these African penguins feed primarily on fish and squid. They live in colonies and they return to the same site every year to raise their chicks. Here it looks like we have some leopard sharks. There's some stairs, but also an elevator that will take you right up to the top of the sky bridge. I'd recommend taking the elevator as often as you can here and trying to do your best to just walk downhill because there's a lot of trails out here that go up and down different parts of the canyon. Luckily, the elevator is located right in the center of the park and you can take it anytime and make your way back around. And in the distance there, you can see the gorillas hanging out there on the grass right next to the waterfall. And right there we have the pygmy hippos. And these are smaller hippos weighing at about 500 pounds. The larger hippos are about 14 to 15 times larger. And here hanging out just at the surface of the water is a crocodile. And this species is 250 million years old. Hello. Hello. We're on the hippo trail. Now entering the Scripps Aviary. I'm keeping an eye out for dinosaurs because it looks just like Jurassic Park in here. Found in Central Africa, this bonobo, along with chimpanzees, are the closest relatives to humans. Bonobos and chimps are not great swimmers, and this led them to evolve separately on the two sides of the Congo River. Bonobos are capable of compassion, empathy, kindness, and patience. And over there on the rock is a tiger taking a nap in the shade. Tigers are the largest living cat species. An apex predator, they mainly hunt deer and wild boar. They're territorial and solitary animals that require large areas of land to inhabit. Here we have the black tweaker and an okapi in the back there. The hippopotamus, or hippo, is a large plant-eating, semi-aquatic mammal. Their closest living relatives are whales, dolphins, and porpoises, and the adults average in weight between 2,800 to 3,300 pounds. There's another kangaroo bus stop. They arrive every 15 minutes and they'll take you to the bus stops around the park. A good way to avoid walking too far. And if you look up on top of those rocks there, you can see the mountain lions. They're also called pumas and they're indigenous to North and South America. 
These guys look like they're related to pigs, maybe. They're called the Chacoan Pacari from South America. These are the Bontabucks. They're from the Western Cape of South Africa. And uh, this is an antelope that usually eats at dawn or dusk. These are the Speaks gazelle. Remember, don't feed Kermit the Frog. There's some zebras over there drinking some water. Behold, in their native habitat, human beings. And one of the cool things is you'll spot peacocks out here too, just walking around the park. There's some snow leopards right here. Way back there on top of the rocks, the snow leopard. And right there we have the Takin. <laughs> These are from southern China through Bhutan with a length up to seven feet and a weight of 880 pounds. These things are big. The red pandas live in the eastern Himalayas and southwestern China. They are solitary animals that eat bamboo, eggs, birds, and insects. And now we're at the Elephant Odyssey, home to the great African elephant. This is the extinct short faced bear. There's a lion right there. And then over here, there's another perch up there with a, it's like a male lion. This section of the zoo also explores conservation themes with a focus on living species that share a common ancestor with those that inhabited California 10,000 years ago. The Elephant Odyssey was built to improve housing for elephants and allow the public to see and learn about elephant care. At the Elephant Odyssey, you can see both African and Asian elephants. There are ways to tell them apart. Asian elephants have smaller ears, while African elephants have large ears shaped like the continent Africa. Camels can live as long as 50 years. They stand six to seven feet tall and can weigh up to 2,000 pounds. Camels can drink 53 gallons of water in just three minutes, and they're adapted to live in hot conditions for up to 10 days without drinking water. There's a California condor. And there's one perched up at the top of the tree there. The meerkat is a small mongoose found in southern Africa. Meerkats are highly social and form packs of 2 to 30 individuals. They live in rock crevices and large burrow systems. These underground networks burrow 5 feet deep and provide a cool and safe place for them to live. On the way back, we passed the koala exhibit again and we're lucky to find this koala who is awake and moving around. This is rare because they sleep 16 to 20 hours a day. This gave us a great opportunity to watch it eating eucalyptus leaves. We then made our way to Center Street and the Sun Bear Trail. This is a 10 minute walk downhill toward Parkway and the elevators. 
The grizzly bear is a brown bear that lives in North America. They can weigh between three to 800 pounds. Grizzly bears hibernate for five to seven months each year. They must prepare a den and consume an abundance of food as they do not eat while hibernating. Okay, and here we are again. We took the elevator and next stop is the sky ride. The Sky Fari travels across the park from east to west and back. The line can take from 5 to 25 minutes, and there is stroller parking on each side. The ride lasts about 5 minutes, and during that time you'll have views of the zoo, Balboa Park, and even downtown San Diego. From above you can see the Bashor Bridge, and Owens and Scripps Aviary. In the distance is the California building, which was the inspiration for the Xanadu estate in the movie Citizen Kane by Orson Welles. We didn't get the chance to visit the children's zoo today because it's closed during construction. They're building a new area exhibit called the Discovery Outpost. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed uh, looking around San Diego Zoo. It's really a wonderful place to visit with your family and friends. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button and notification bell. And we'll have more videos coming soon with different places in San Diego and throughout California. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. If you'd like to learn more about Balboa Park, click the link right here to watch our latest video about 15 things you can do in Balboa Park.